Almighty God, your servants give you thanks and praise for the work you brought to completion in us and through us. You have caused us to rejoice in seeing your generous hand being upon your people. You have caused our hearts to return to you, and even in our weaknesses, you have given us peace and strength to handle the slings and arrows of the nations around us. This day, the 25th of the month, and the 52nd day since we started, you have been with us, guiding us, strengthening us, and providing us peace and wisdom. This wall reminds us that you remember us and remember your promises. We are grateful that your hand of blessing has been with us. Lord, my time here has come to completion, but the work is not nearly complete. Many have fled Jerusalem never to return. I pray that you cause leaders to rise up to lead your city. I pray that those who guard, those who keep watch over the gates, and all those who rebuild within her walls keep you first in their lives and work. Jerusalem is in your hands. Hear these words from the heart of your servant, Nehemiah. And I pray, Lord, that the people do what you have placed on their hearts to do. Well, during the past seven weeks, we've been following Nehemiah and his story. We've watched the the wall be built as we've added those key elements of what it took for Nehemiah and to make a difference in Jerusalem and in uh, the people of God there. In his story, we've seen the essentials of what it takes for us uh, to continue to make a difference for God in in our generation. Today we're going to shift our focus um, and look at one final key to living a life that makes a difference for God. Hebrews 13, 8 tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His intentions for the church uh, were and, and are clear. His great commission tells us that we're to continue to make a difference in the world until he returns for us or he calls us home. The first rule for any organization is simply this, keep the main thing the main thing. Keep the main thing. So so what's the main thing for the church? Today's memory verse from Hebrews 12 sums it up, I think. Let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from start to finish. It's not about us. It's about him. Jesus is the main thing in the life of the church, in its vision and in its ministry. And if we live like we believe that, we will make a difference here in our town. Making a difference for God is all about running the race that God has set before us. Uh, And that's different from Nehemiah. We're not building Nehemiah's wall. We're charged and and to live out the vision that God has for us in this town. Making a difference for God requires that we stay focused on his vision for his church. Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, we give you thanks that uh, as we turn once again to your word that that you might continue to show us 
just as you did those people of Israel in the days of Nehemiah, that as we live out our lives with these keys in our lives, we will make a difference for you because you have called us and equipped us for such a great purpose. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to do a quick review of the keys that we found in Nehemiah's success in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, and those keys still hold today. First key, make a decision about who we are and about whom we will live our life for, making that decision. The second key, to move out of our comfort zone, to set our hearts on the things that God is asking for us, uh, for us to have a heart like his, a dislocated heart that would reach out to where God would call us. Third key, to refocus our priorities, become passionate about the things that God is passionate about, to, to experience a broken spirit for the things that break God's heart. Uh, number four was to stand in the gap, uh, to live with a radical faith, and to not allow our fears or our failures or anything else to limit our faithfulness. Uh, to be willing to live with that radical faith. Number five was to seize today, to to realize that it takes a a strategic plan to bring God's agenda into being. It just doesn't happen. We have to think about what is it going to take? Who can we involve? What will it require of us to accomplish God's vision? Number six was then to do whatever it takes, then to to put our uh, commitment into action. Uh, Nothing gets done until someone takes the step and starts to do what God has laid out before us. And and number seven was don't get discouraged. We saw how uh, there's always going to be those who would discourage us and and, uh, bring ridicule and criticism and consequently discouragement. But we needed to to grow a courageous soul, to to have whatever it takes and to to persevere even when things don't go the way we think. And and today's final ascension is simply this, to focus on the vision, uh, to live with holy ambition, uh, to do what it is that God calls us to do. The first essential to to living with holy ambition is simply this. The Christian life should make a difference for God. The Christian life should make a difference for God. Tower Church has been making a difference for God in in the heart of this city since it began. Did a little research this week. The first class meeting of 11 people uh, met in 1842. And they, they originally it wasn't here, it was at Sawyer, and, and that was the beginning of this church. Uh, the church has, has uh, been served since that time uh, by some 62, 63 pastors and associates. That's uh, the, the longevity of the church. It's been here for 172 years since the beginning of that first class that met in uh, 1842. So now it's our turn. It's our turn to, to take up the mission uh, to, uh, to do what it is that God calls us to do. And we have to remember that God never calls us to a ministry without making provision for what it will take for us to accomplish that vision. Uh, we need to understand that God already knows what it will take uh, to equip us to run the race that he set before us. He already knows what it is that we're going to need to do what he wants us to do and be. Uh, in your worship folders, you're going to find some verses that, that uh, uh, should remind us of our goal and help us to keep focused on what it means to make a difference. From time to time, we need to remind one another of uh, just what our target is and, and just who will empower us to reach those goals. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece, He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Ephesians 3.20 says, By his mighty power at work within us, he is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to hope or to ask, to ask or to hope. 1 Corinthians, Paul says, Remember that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. You also must run in such a way that you will win. All athletes practice strict self-control. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it 
for an eternal prize. It's not enough to to simply make a difference in the world. We have to make the right difference in the world. The target, the goal, the, the focus of the Christian walk is to glorify God. That's why we're here. To make a difference in the world that will lead others to him or to reflect his glory. That's what we're charged to do and be. So our question becomes, how do we make that difference? And I think the answer is, is in this, this second essential. We will make a difference for God by living what we believe. By living what we believe. During this series, we learned a, a great deal together about what it took to be a difference maker from Nehemiah, the, the cupbearer of a foreign king, the, the king of Persia. Who would have thought that God would have used the cupbearer of a foreign king for his purpose? Who would have thought that Nehemiah's strategic vision for Jerusalem would be accomplished in just 52 days? They rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. Also, who would have thought that by 1968, this church would have grown to over 1,800 members in 1968? At the end of that year, it was uh, 1,383 members in the church. Um, when, when members live like they believe, God honors those commitments, and, and they make a difference. The Bible says... <clears throat> For the Lord God is our light and protector. He gives us grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who do what is right. In Corinthians, once again, Paul says, There are different kinds of service in the church, but it is the same Lord we are serving. There are different ways God works in our lives, but it is the same God who does the work through all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us as a means of helping the entire church. Earlier, Paul said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, Chip Ingram, author and pastor in his book, Holy Ambition, What It Takes to Make a Difference for God, is is kind of the, the backbone of this whole series. This is what he writes. We have opportunities today as never before to practice what we believe. We can allow circumstances to cow and silence us, or we can see the shaking of the nations as the opening of doors so that people with holy ambition can make a difference for God. The world has seen the terror of destruction that people of holy ambition can can wreak. It's time again to be available to God to show the world what his people can accomplish. The Christian life should make a difference for God. And we make a difference for God by living what we believe, by living what we believe. And the third essential is this. God has promised us that when our hearts are completely his, we will not fail. When our hearts are completely his, we will not fail. The foundation verse for this whole series is is from 2 Chronicles uh, Chapter 16, verse 9. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Now, I'm not saying that everything we attempt will have the Midas touch because you and I know that's not how it works. A lot of times we may attempt something and and it doesn't quite work the way we thought it would. But what I'm saying is, is that God will accomplish exactly what he intends. Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10 says, And do not forget the things I have done throughout history. For I am God, I alone. I am God, and there is no one else like me. Only I can tell what is going to happen, even before it happens. Everything I plan will come to pass. For I do whatever I wish. Isaiah 55, 11 says... It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. Jeremiah, the great prophet, said, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. 
In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me in earnest, you will find me when you seek me. In John's gospel, Jesus said, I am sustained by doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. And then in Acts, Paul said, But my life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about God's wonderful kindness and love. God accomplishes what he intends. Doing what God intends is the key to making a difference for God. The the Christian life should make a difference. Uh, We make a difference for God when we live what we believe, when we live out what we believe. And when our hearts are completely his, we're guaranteed we will not fail when we are totally his. For the most part, how we live demonstrates to the world our priorities and our goals, what we value most in life. How we live demonstrates that. In the weeks after Easter, we're going to revisit the core values of our church because those are what enable us to to remain true to living what we believe. We're going to look at those six core values. What is it to live with those values? The truth is, is, you know, I believe that that God's not finished with the vision that he has for his church. And that's why it's easy for me to say with Paul these words. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. I always pray for you, and I make my request with a heart full of joy, because you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I am sure that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on that day when Christ Jesus comes back. You may remember it when we we started this series, I promised that we would have something that would help you figure out uh, where you can plug in and where you can begin to to be a dis a, a dis, different uh, person that makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on the information table uh, in the fellowship hall today, you will find these booklets. They are called the Ministry and Service Handbook. Um, they are they're always going to be a work in progress. We're always going to be updating these because things are going to change in the life of the church. Uh, but, but that's what it is. It's called the, the Ministry and Service Handbook. And in it, you're going to find some information about our mission and our purpose. It's, it's uh, always important to keep those before us. Um, corporate America has found that uh, vision and mission um, go away in 27 days. If you don't refresh those, you, you have to always keep them before them. So, so that, that's, you're going to find that in the first part of this booklet. Uh, you're also going to find uh, the various ministries and opportunities that we either already have or we'd like to have as a part of our church in here. Um, uh, so we want this to be a tool for you to, to help you decide where you can begin to serve the church and ministry in the church. Uh, the cards that, that are in the worship folder, these cards that say, my ministry and service, they're two-sided there. They're to be used in conjunction with, with this booklet and because you can look through this and see what it is that, that you feel that you can be doing in the life of the church, and then you can fill out one of these cards, and you can put those in the offering plate any time during any worship service, or you can drop them off at the office, and we'll get them. And, and within a week, uh, we'll get those to one of the uh, leaders in the primary leadership team, and that person will be in touch with you about how we can get you involved and engaged in that ministry. Now, the, the thing that's not in there. Um, there may be some things that you believe God would have us to be doing that aren't listed here, and that's okay. If, if there's something that you really believe and feel strongly that God would have us as a church doing, I want you to take that card, and, and these are always going to be available from now on too, take that card and just write on the back, this is the ministry I would like to be involved in, and I didn't see it in the handbook. And that's okay, because then uh, the primary leadership team will will get that, and we'll figure out, hey, what what do we need to do here? 
How do we need to get this going? Is this possible? Do, can we make a strategic plan for this? And, and we may uh, pull you aside and kind of uh, pick your brain and think, well, what are you thinking about here? What are the things that you see? But, but this is our, our tool to be used uh, every, every year, every six months or so. We'll update this to keep it current. So the things that are, are being added or taken away, we'll, we'll make sure. But, but that's the, the ministry and service handbook. Um, you know, as we move ahead, um, we're going to continue to do uh, new ministries. But we also may have to just stop doing some of the things that, that are no longer effective. They were good and they were great and they made a difference. Uh, but, but once again, we're, we're driven by the principle of, of keeping everything that we do in the life of the church um, uh, bordered by or bound by the great commandment and the great commission. We're going to see changes in the face of our congregation. With, with God's help, we're going to see people come to, to be called to the life and ministry of our church because God is calling them to be a part of one of those ministries. We're going to see a, a transformation in some of the people's lives that we, we uh, impact. And throughout my years of ministry, uh, God always changes people that I didn't expect and doesn't use people that I thought he would. You know, that's, that's just the way it is. For those that whose hearts are not fully committed to God's vision, those who are unwilling to do whatever it takes to accomplish his purpose, they're going to continue to struggle um, for a life of meaning. And and we know that. But for those who are willing to do whatever it takes to, to accomplish God's vision for his church, to those whose hearts are fully committed to Christ, we will make a difference in the life of our city, will make a difference in the lives of our partner church that we're partnered with in Nicaragua, Um, will make a difference because God will use us for his glory. Our mission is simple. It is to know Christ and to make him known. To know Christ and to make him known. That's the mission of our church. We're going to continue to stay focused uh, on that mission, living with holy ambition. We're going to continue to strive to to, uh, live out the great commandment and to fulfill the great commission. That's what the church is called to do and be. And as we strive to to know Christ and to make him known, we're going to continue to to connect people with Jesus Christ, uh, to grow in our relationship with him, uh, to serve the master through our ministry and service to others, through through our uh, handbook for ministry and service, to equip ourselves so that we can reach others for Christ, to to be equipped and and to be ready to talk about our faith. And in all things, that we might glorify God. That's the purpose of the church. That's our call as believers, to bring glory to God. Everything we we do is going to be focused on that mission. We're, We're going to strive to keep the main thing in the church the main thing. We're going to strive to make a difference by living what we believe. God's promised that that when our hearts are completely his, we won't fail at what he calls us to do. So the question at the bottom of the note page is simple. What difference will you be making when Jesus returns? What difference will you be making when Jesus returns? It's my prayer that when, when the Lord returns for the faithful, that he'll find his church still connecting people, still growing, uh, still serving, still equipping, and, and still glorifying God. So I want to just ask you uh, to take time to ask Christ uh, to empower you, to equip you to make the difference that he wants you to make in the world. Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, for for some of us today, it's time for us to make a decision. For some decisions are are just crucial in our life, and and they've been a long time coming, and and they're life decisions about who we're going to serve, and, and all of our lives have been bringing up to this day in our lives. Some decisions are are about taking the next step of faith and moving out of our comfort zone. And and some decisions are about refocusing our priorities and and learning how to live with radical faith. Some decisions are about being willing to do whatever it takes to see your purpose accomplished in our lives and here in our church and in our town. For some here today, Lord, Uh, Maybe they've lost their focus and and their hearts long to be rooted in you. 
And they're, they're ready to focus on the vision that you have in their life. And, and they want to live with that holy ambition. And for some of us here today, Lord, it's, it's time for us to settle the question of where we stand with you. There are some here who are just tired of the burdens of life and, and they, don't, they don't want to grow weary and lose heart. They want to experience the joy of, of having a life that makes a difference for you. Lord, your word says that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouths that Jesus is our personal Savior and Lord, that he died on the cross to save us of our sins, that we'll be saved for all eternity. So Lord, uh, help us and equip us to run the race that, uh, with endurance that you've set before us. We need your Holy Spirit to uh, equip us and um, to empower us that we will keep our eyes on Jesus wherever our life takes us. Lord, for, for us today, this may be a starting point, and for some of us, it's the next step. But you know the hearts of these, your people, and you know what it is that, that you want us to do and be. Help us. Empower us to live our lives in such a way that, that we'll bring honor to you. We love you, Lord, and, and we just praise you for all that you've done and what you're about to do in this, your church. We, we just are excited about all that you can accomplish and the lives that you will change as we remain faithful and live with holy ambition. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You stand and join us in singing. Mm-hmm.